I don't need to indulge in any, hy any hyperbole, um, because we read this in, um, in the papers every day. But the fact is that over 77 billion is expected to be spent on information security this year. And yet, the concerns in terms of security continue to be higher than ever before. And if you look at it fundamentally, it's because of what we call as an attacker-defender asymmetry. So what does that mean? If you look at what's happening today in enterprise infrastructure, bring your own device, mobility, the increased attack surface, right? Virtualization increases the security blind spots. We talked about encryption, and the rising use of encryption means that malware could hide inside of those encrypted traffic. And if you're not able to decrypt that, then it can easily go under the radar of a security ops administrator. Right? Other examples is the sophistication of the kill chains and the sophistication of the attacker, which means that it's not just gargantuan amounts of traffic that you need, you need to be looking at. There could also be that what we call as the low and slow uh, traffic that's flowing through the infrastructure, which could give some indications of things to come. Right? And these typically happen in the earliest stages of the attacker lifecycle. And lastly, it's the growing recognition among most organizations that you can't just be using the legacy means to understand today's modern security threats. So a good uh, way to summarize this would be, it looks like the colors are slightly off here, but um, I think the contrast is the one that's more important. If you look at a legacy approach that's done, which is you take a span port, send the traffic to a specific security tool, the two things which happen. Number one, you're getting a very partial view of the infrastructure. Why? You're just getting insight into what's happening on that specific link, right? That's about it. Number two, the amount of traffic that's fed to it can be, may not be relevant. There could be a lot of irrelevant traffic that's being fed to it. So a lot of traffic today that's flowing through enterprise infrastructure is video, right? And that may not be the cause of the attack. So the point here is that the ability to filter out the irrelevant traffic and extract the relevant traffic is one of the key things. And nor do you have any kind of um, tool efficiency uh, because of this. So an alternative mechanism is, wouldn't it be nice if you could have a view into the entire infrastructure and be able to have that selective control of what you want to look at? Right? And that really is the core premise of what a security delivery platform is. It's as simple as that. Uh, on the surface, it might look almost too simple, right? But the key thing to note here is that the reason it's not been done so far is because the second aspect that I mentioned of having that selective control of what traffic to extract has not really existed to date. So when you combine the two, you get pervasive visibility into the infrastructure. You get much better tool efficiency because you can filter out uh, what is irrelevant to the security tools and provide it just relevant traffic. And number three, you also have the granular traffic selection controls. And those are the three key premises of the security delivery platform. So to date, this is typically how um, organizations build out the tooling infrastructure, whether it's for security or for application performance, manage and, uh, performance management, but we look very specifically at the security challenge today. There's so much to protect and so many links to monitor. How do you do that? So you start throwing security tools at the problem, right? But the attacks today are not just coming from the perimeter. You have to look within. When you, when you talk about lateral movement, in networking terms, that's classic east-west <coughs> movement, right? So those are masquerading as attacks. So the challenge from a security ops perspective is, how do, these how do these security tools gain pervasive visibility, not just into what is coming at the perimeter, but could be happening anywhere in the infrastructure? Where should these security tools be placed? That's the second challenge that they have. How does one rapidly investigate a new threat source? And this is not remember signature-based detection that these tools are, um, are looking at. Now bear in mind, today's security tools are becoming very, very sophisticated. Right? Eric will speak about some of the sophistications that are there in the Cisco SourceFire, uh, I should say Cisco Firepower uh, set of security tools. Um, but the question here is that how do we have the best way to connect those tools to the network traffic, given the fact that the network traffic gives the most live view of what's going on in the infrastructure? 
So a better way to do this is to, uh, is to look at everything, i.e. see everything in the infrastructure, so that you could now have a view into the entire infrastructure and have a common set of tools that could programmatically get access to any of this. And that's what we call as a security delivery platform. We believe that there are six key components to this. The first one is you've got to have a complete network-wide reach. Doesn't matter if it is physical, doesn't matter if it is virtual, you've got to have that full reach. Without the reach, you're getting partial views of the infrastructure. Now, as networking people, all of you know that there's a lot of changes which are happening in the infrastructure. Could be Cisco ACI, could be VMware NSX, could be a move towards SDN, could be a move towards disaggregation, could be a move from 10 gig to 40 gig, could be a move to 100 gig, doesn't matter. But the visibility infrastructure should be able to have that reach which provides that network-wide view to it. The second one is scalable metadata for extraction of improved forensics. Remember I spoke about the slow and low traffic, you know, that keeps kind of happening um, you know, at a very low rate, right? So this is stuff which happens when somebody clicks on that phishing link. And what happens? Perhaps an agent gets installed on your, um, on your device, and this communication which is happening to the external actor's um, a, a website, right? So that's a very, very slow trickle of traffic, but can you catch that before it actually turns into data exfiltration? So catching it as soon as possible is, 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 the, is, is a key aspect. We spoke about the third one, which is isolation of uh, applications for targeted inspection. So there are very specific applications that you may want to look at, or you may want to filter out, right? So, for instance, traffic to, um, uh, to a DNS server is obviously a simple example of it. But uh, the even more um, advanced examples would be, you know, can I just look at email? Can I just look at emails with attachments? And there are two components to this. One is you want to just send applications of interest. The second aspect is you want to extract out applications that are not of interest. So filter out the YouTube traffic, filter out the Netflix traffic, filter out Spotify, right? Um, filter out any emails that do not have any attachments. Those are the kinds of things that we talk about when we say <coughs> isolation of applications for targeted inspection. Encrypted traffic, big deal. According to Gartner, almost about a third of traffic is encrypted in SSL today. Um, when I talk to many enterprises, they say, that's it, it's actually much more. <laughs> right? So it's actually a lot of traffic encrypted today. Right? So how do you get visibility to that encrypted traffic for threat detection because of what's hiding behind that malware? And lastly, uh, inline bypass for connected security applications. Uh, and this is the topic that we'll double click on that Patrick will go through in great detail and Norm will do a demo on. Of all, the, of all those pillars, is it just the last one that's new? Because the other things seem like you've had it for, for a while in terms of application, you know, inspection for targeted, or targeted inspection, things like that. Is so, it just the last bucket that's new? So actually, we've been doing inline bypass for a while, but we have come a significantly long way. Okay. But the, actually, the newest one is, in fact, isolation of applications for targeted inspection. So okay. application session filtering okay. is a new application that we have developed. Okay. What we had before was uh, uh, an ad an, uh, what we call as an adaptive packet filtering, which is kind of a deep and a packet filtering. So that is good for uh, things like extracting uh, packets with certain headers, right. but you would just get that specific packet. So not what we've now done is the ability to extract entire TCP sessions, entire UDP got sessions, it, it, cool. including the initial handshake. Okay. Right? So even though the signatures could, have, could be found later on right. in, in that stream, you would actually have the ability to extract you know, the entire initial, initial flow. And that we have found is you know, extremely useful for security tools in particular, uh, although there are some applications that go beyond that too. Okay. So hopefully this gives you, and um, when we met uh, at Technology Field Day here about a year back, we did not have um, the ability to look at encrypted traffic. So that's something that we announced, I think, a couple of months after that. So that, you could argue, is also uh, kind of new relative to the last full Technology Day uh, event that we did. So these are the five pillars. I mentioned there are six, and the sixth one is how do you manage and orchestrate all of this, right? And that happens through, um, um, you know, uh, uh, an orchestration manager with the ability to APIs. Now, these are concepts. So the security delivery platform is actually, um, we believe it's actually a, a, a market category by itself, and we speak to many uh, network and security analysts. 
And um, the implementation of the security delivery platform from Gigamon is what we call as GigaSecure. Okay? So GigaSecure is Gigamon's security delivery platform. So going back to your question, so what we have to support that would be the GigaView nodes that provide the network-wide reach, could be a physical node, could be a virtual node. We have a very sophisticated, high-performance NetFlow and IPFIX generation. Remember, this is not collection, but generation of, of traffic, of, of records, I'm sorry. So we can take in network traffic coming in from any um, network and generate NetFlow records or IPFIX records on behalf of the network. Okay. Um, application session filtering that we just spoke about, SSL decryption and inline bypass, along with the APIs. So the aspect of the security delivery platform has been endorsed by almost 17 of our ecosystem partners, Cisco being one of them. And um, I won't let you read the, the fine print there. <laughs> it's like a good eye chart. Uh, but the point here is that um, a broad ecosystem of partners see a tremendous value in being able to see uh, much more traffic than what they've been used to. Can I yep. a, a slide back when you said about the NetFlow? So you're basically taking devices that don't natively support NetFlow or IPFIX and capturing that data and then generating that NetFlow data for those applications or for so, those devices? So that is one uh, potential use case. Okay. Um, but there's no dependency on the actual um, network traffic coming into uh, into, into the Gigamon visibility okay. fabric. It can actually be anything. Okay. So uh, what you mentioned is exactly one use case wherein a device may not be able to support NetFlow and so we can you know, handle that on behalf of that. The second case could be maybe the device handles NetFlow and either it's supporting an older version of NetFlow it or perhaps... It to a newer version. Exactly. Right? Or uh, perhaps it could be uh, the fact that um, it is just too overloaded because of you know the, the compute cycles. Too that, much strain on the... Yeah, exactly. Strain. Exactly. So one key thing that I want to mention here is a lot of times you get questions about, well, why not just do sampling, right? Now, why not just use S-Flow as an example? Um, and I think there's a huge difference between using uh, metadata generation for application performance management and using it for security. When you're using sampling uh, for application performance management, you know, if you're looking at um, one in 8,000 packets, that may be good enough over a long period of time. When you're using it for security purposes, that's horrible, right? Because now you're missing out 99.9% .9 of it. And that is exactly where you could be missing out key, key events. So big difference based on the use case. And um, we've also started uh, inserting additional metadata, which we won't have time to go into in detail today, but um, in future we'll hopefully have a dedicated session on that. So a uh, quick wrap up in terms of the benefits of what we see from this before I hand it over to Patrick. Um, first of all, it's a consistent network wide traffic view um, for all the security uh, apl applications. And it's all of the time. Um, so some um, experts call this as continuous monitoring. And this is exactly what uh, it enables, right? Continuous monitoring of your infrastructure. Um, there isn't any contention for access to data. and um, when Patrick talks about it, I'm sure he'll talk about uh, this in greater detail. One of the singular challenges which happens in organizations is that you know, the network and security team struggle to come to an agreement on you know, what's the best way to deploy this because the network teams are so focused on resiliency of the infrastructure, um, whereas the security, security teams are empowered with a mission to secure the infrastructure. Um, and this is a great way to kind of bring the two teams together. Uh, you'll also uh, listen to Patrick talk about you know, the ability to easily upgrade tools, no disruptions, and many of the other benefits that you, that you see here. So before I hand over to Patrick, any questions on the overall GigaSecure security delivery platform? Okay. Um, I should also mention one thing. Um, a common question we get is, so what is the GigaSecure security delivery platform. Is it an appliance? Is it a piece of software? Is it, so is it just a term? So uh, I would say it is, think of it as a platform which can consist of multiple nodes underneath it. And just like the visibility fabric is a distributed system of nodes, likewise, we provide that network-wide view, okay? So the visibility fabric applied very specifically to security is what GigaSecure is. But is that is this specific? Then you know, can you repurpose the current deployment to be 
like a you know giga secure delivery platform you could you could so this is more like an application built into your 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 portal your single pane of glass automat you know yeah so there are certain applications that are unique to a giga secure uh, like the ones that i mentioned netflow um, you know, has got a very specific purpose. Right. And not just the net flow generation piece of it, but as I mentioned, there's metadata that we export today. So for example, uh, what URLs, for example, were accessed. You know, that's examples of information which would be uninteresting for an application performance management administrator, but be very interesting for a security administrator or for integration with SIM tools. The application session filtering is an example of it. And then- From a commercial perspective, if somebody says, I want that, mm -hmm. What you know, and they already have Gigamon stuff deployed. Mm -hmm. What is that new thing they're buying? Is it a SKU? Is it software? Like a plugin for their monitoring? Like, like what is it? Yeah. So I would um, break question. So I would break it into two parts. Um, and I should probably have mentioned this before. Um, so a lot of you probably think that the visibility infrastructure is usually out of band, right? Everybody thinks that way. So actually, the visibility infrastructure can also be placed in line. And the last pillar that you honed in on, the inline bypass, is an excellent example where you can actually be placing it in line. So back to your question, if the customer wants to deploy it in line, then they would need that specific sure, sure. You know, hardware systems that support sure. the, the inline capabilities. If they're looking at tapping into uh, the newer capabilities, then it's software skills, assuming that they've got other components of the platform. So, so it's a license to add or something? Exactly. Okay. exactly. 